So what hormones does your hypothalamus produce? Let's talk about it. In a previous video, I outlined all nine of the hormones plus neurotransmitters your hypothalamus produces. The majority of those hormones cannot be measured. They're, in the they're not in the periphery of the body. They're only in the hypothalamus, directing your body's hormone production by using the pituitary gland as middle manager. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the three hormones that can actually circulate in the rest of the body. The other six are releasing factors to get the pituitary gland to release its stimulating hormones or stop the production of certain pituitary hormones. These three hypothalamic hormones affect your body directly. Number one hypothalamus hormone is melanocyte stimulating hormone or MSH. Melanocyte stimulating hormone is not very well known by the public or even most doctors because it's not easily measured. Through scientific research, we do know the effects of melanocyte stimulating hormone. At first, we believe that melanocyte stimulating hormone only did what its name suggested, to stimulate melanocytes, the cells that produce melanin, which is the color in your skin, your hair, your eyes. Yet that's not the only thing that MSH does. Melanocyte stimulating hormone also suppresses your appetite. It regulates aldosterone, which is the adrenal hormone that controls your salt water balance and helps control your blood pressure. Melanocyte stimulating hormone induces sleep. It affects learning and memory. Melanocyte stimulating hormone can suppress fevers. MSH helps to regenerate peripheral nerves. MSH is also involved in inflammatory and immune responses. Plus, melanocyte stimulating hormone is involved in sexual arousal. MSH is not just responsible for darkening your skin. MSH affects so many functions of your body and your brain. Number two hypothalamic hormone is antidiuretic hormone, or ADH, also known as vasopressin. ADH conserves the fluid volume in your blood. By suppressing your kidney's production of urine, ADH helps to increase your blood pressure. If you don't make enough vasopressin, you have a condition called diabetes insipidus, in which you have incredible thirst, excessive urination, and resultant dehydration because you're not making enough antidiuretic hormone to stop the production of urine. Antidiuretic hormone is active during the night, concentrating your kidney's production of urine so you can sleep. One of the hypothalamic dysfunctions we see during the change of life is having to get up in the middle of the night to urinate more and more frequently. And that's because your hypothalamus is not producing an adequate amount of antidiuretic hormone to suppress urinary production and your bladder keeps filling up. The third hormone that the hypothalamus produces is oxytocin. Oxytocin is known as the cuddle hormone. It's the hormone that allows you to bond with other people. It's how a mother bonds with her infant and initiates the breastfeeding experience. Oxytocin is produced when you're sexually aroused and produced in largest amounts when you orgasm. But you also produce oxytocin when you hug, kiss, or cuddle another, even petting your dog or cat. Oxytocin is the feel-good hormone and it allows you to bond with others, which is biologically an important survival function. Now, if you have any questions about the hormones that your hypothalamus produces, why don't you join us in our hormone support group where you'll get access through our free hormone reboot training. It's all about helping you understand how your hypothalamus works to affect your hormones and so much more. Your hypothalamus produces nine different hormones and many neurotransmitters, three of which, melanocyte stimulating hormone, antidiuretic hormone, and oxytocin, circulate through your blood to affect many vital processes. For more details on the hormones produced by your hypothalamus, why don't you check out my next video?